As Christians, we have hope with faith. And we have evidence based on our faith. And we also know that uh, Christ who raised from the dead, the universe and the world that was created by God, we have faith. And we actually have evidence that shows that, that increases our faith. So I'd like to speak a little bit about that. I had someone ask me, uh, isn't faith the contrary to evidence based on matter and things? And if you have evidence of something, there is no room for faith, he said. And then you know. So, and then he called these things for which there are evidence, knowledge, or facts. Well, he makes a good point. So I'd like to speak to this and uh, in the biblical context to try to help people understand a little bit more, have a little bit more awareness of Christian or biblical faith uh, for which we use and allow to be a part of our daily walk with Christ. So let me get started here and hopefully you can glean some more information. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. This is uh, the writer in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, which is very well known. How many times have you heard a speaker delivering a motivational speech say, you just got to believe? Usually they mean we need self-confidence. While this is helpful in life, it is not the faith we read about in the Bible. According to the scriptures, Faith is essential to salvation, Hebrews 11.6. So, what is faith? The term translated faith in Hebrews 11.1 1 is defined as trust, firm persuasion, belief, confidence, or conviction. But the writer of Hebrews informs us it is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. The word substance is rendered assurance by the American Standard Bible version. The word literally means a standing under support. Faith in relation to hope is assurance. It stands under and supports our hope. Thus, one's hope is only as secure as his faith is strong. The term evidence is rendered conviction by the American Standard Version. It is defined as a proof or proving. Saving faith is not a blind acceptance of unprovable opinions. It is not based on feeling, emotion, or a blind leap. It is conviction supported by evidence. The author of Hebrews informs us the faith we must have includes two elements. This is referenced in Hebrews 11.6. It is conviction of truth. We must believe that he is. It is also trust. We must believe that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Conviction causes us to accept his word without question. Trust leads us to obey him without doubt. Faith, by its very virtue, begins and ends in the realm of the unseen. It is conviction supported by evidence concerning things we do not know by experience. By faith, we accept that the invisible things of God are behind the visible universe. Hebrews 11.3 And by faith, we hope for a home in heaven, though we have never seen that paradise. 2 Corinthians 4.18 Does this mean faith is unreasonable? I believe Christopher Columbus discovered America in 1492, and you probably do too. This belief cannot be put into a test tube or measured by scientific methods. It is nonetheless true. Things one cannot currently experience, such as facts of history, are demonstrated by methods other than observation and experimentation. I cannot put God into a test tube or measure his chemical components, but I can produce a different kind of evidence 
that he exists. The evidence that supports the Christian's faith is divine in origin. Very important. Inasmuch as the God about whom we read in the Bible is infinitely more trustworthy than man, we should expect this evidence to be of superior value to mere human testimony. I believe an honest, unprejudiced study of the evidence of God, his Son, and his Word will confirm this. The first body of evidence to support our faith is the world, the first and general revelation of God to man. The very existence of the universe, its power, order, and complexity demand that a being sufficient to produce it, i.e. God, must be behind it. Romans 1.20 But from nature we can only know that there is a God, that he has unlimited power and intelligence, and that he possesses will. But what is he like? Is he good or bad? Loving or hating? Kind or cruel? What does he want from me? How can I enjoy his fellowship? To know these things, I must turn to the second and special revelation of God to man, the written word in the Bible, Romans 10, 17. The Bible's words not only tells me about God, it gives evidence to demonstrate that there is a God, that the Bible is the word of God, and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Some of these powerful proofs are the harmony of scriptures, fulfilled prophecies, both about ancient nations and about Christ, and the evidence Christ has been raised from the dead. These two realms of evidence, the world and the word, give ample reason for a firm, reasonable conviction that there is a God in heaven, that the Bible is his word, and that Jesus Christ is his son. Faith is the means whereby we are saved. In fact, we cannot be saved without it. Hebrews 11, 2 and 6. And finally, faith is also the principle by which Christians live. From the time a young person first considers the evidence for his faith, then renders the obedience of his faith that makes him a Christian, then grows daily in his knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of the Lord's will, lives a holy life, becomes spiritually mature, and develops a character more and more like Jesus, until finally, he, as an aged, faithful saint, departs this world to enter paradise. Every step he takes on life's journey that is pleasing to God is a step taken in faith. Every step taken without faith is sin. For we walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. I hope this helps people to slightly understand a little bit more about our biblical faith in the context of Christianity, and I hope you continue to study the Word. Keep an open mind, an open heart, and read the Bible. Don't be afraid. It's a real historical text. It's not a mumbo-jumbo fairy tale. There's too much evidence to prove and show us that we can have faith that uh, is everlasting. So thanks a lot for your time. I appreciate it. God bless.